name's Farmer John. And I want to talk with you about something that's excited me ever since I was a little boy growing up way back in Kansas. When I was very young, much younger than you, I used to spend hours thinking about where things came from. What makes everything work? Got. For instance, where did my mother get that milk that she made me drink every day? Yes, I know. From a store. But then where'd the store get? And what about all those cereals and the bread that tasted so good every morning? The corn and the wheat. Where'd the store get that? Well, I got a little bit older, maybe about your age, and I found out that all these things come from a farm. Well, sometimes all different kinds of farms. I learned that a farm is a place where animals and planted things grow up and get picked. Where you can pick fruit right off a tree. And where people work hard at all kinds of jobs. Jobs that help put the very food you eat right on your dinner table. Now, not every farm is used to make food. Some farms are used to keep animals that people need. There are farms for horses, for instance, or for sheep. People like to ride horses. And we use the wool from sheep to help us keep warm in the winter. We make clothing out of that wool. But no matter what kind of work goes on in a farm, every farm is a very exciting place. So let's spend a little while together here today on Old McDonald's Farm. I'll show you all the different things that go on here and how everything works. And believe me, by the time we're finished, you'll not only know a lot about farming, you'll be amazed at what you've seen. Well, if it isn't my good friend, Robbie. Hi there, Robbie. You want to walk around with me on the farm today? You bet. I want to see everything on the farm. <laughs> good. Well, first of all, now every farm has someone who's in charge. Someone who tells all the workers what to do and make sure the work's done right. This person has to decide what's going to happen that day on the farm. It's a hard job with a lot of responsibilities. This man or woman's called a farmer. And this particular farm here is run by old Farmer McDonald. Well, here he is now. Hi there, Farmer McDonald. Hello, Farmer John. And you must be Robbie. I'm delighted to have both of you here today. Today's a special day here at old McDonald's farm because we've got a lot of extra work to do. We're starting to prepare the fields today, and we've got a lot of different animals to take care of. Not only that, we're going to use some of the biggest and noisiest machines we've got. Some of them are very dangerous. Too dangerous for children to get close to, I'm afraid. You'll have to stay at a safe distance, Robbie. Come on, Farmer McDonald. Let's get started. Look, here comes our tractor. And there's Farmer Joe, our head man here. Well, let's have Farmer Joe tell Robbie how the tractor works as we start to get ready. This tractor is probably the most important piece of equipment on the farm. So, number one reason, it can do about anything. You can push, you can pull, uh, it can push and pull any type of weather, mainly because it's got four-wheel drive, which means all four wheels can turn at the same time. You can really dig in. The back wheels, these, weigh close to 1,000 to 1,500 pounds each because they are loaded with soft water and very little air. The front tires are loaded with strictly air. Why they have salt water is for balance, so the tractor does not tip over. Inside the cab where I'm sitting is a steering wheel. And believe it or not, a lot of this stuff is the same as you have in your car. This has a tilt steering wheel. Right here is a hand throttle, a hand gas pedal. Over here is a shifting lever that makes the equipment that we tow behind it work. These two handles right here make the bucket go up and down and turn. Now if I push this handle, the bucket turns down. If you push this handle, everything goes down. These are the brakes, and right now the emergency brake is on. This, to release the emergency brake, I press down, the handle down and my brake is on. What does the tractor do? Here on the farm this tractor cuts hay, bales hay, rakes hay, uh, plow soil, harrow soil, plants, the seed, fertilizes, spread manure, uh, pull cars out of ditches, uh, just about anything. Farmer McDonald uses his tractors to attach different machines. Each machine helps him with a different job around the farm. First, the farmer prepares the land for planting. Then he plants the seeds that grow into crops. He can plant many different kinds of seeds, corn, wheat, or vegetables. After the seeds grow, he picks or harvests his crop. Farmer McDonald uses his tractor to pull almost every machine on the farm to help with these jobs. The farmer's first job is to prepare what's called till the land. He wants to 
create the best possible soil conditions before planting a crop. First, the soil needs some fertilizer. Fertilizer? Fertile means to grow, and farmers put fertilizer into the soil to help their crops grow better. Well, look at Farmer McDonald, and he's with the tractor again. He and Farmer Joe are putting on a big machine called a spreader. Some farmers use their spreader to spread chemical fertilizers. Others use old hay and leaves that have dried out. That's called composting, and it helps the soil hold in water. All fertilizers are good for the soil. They feed it, just like we need food. And it helps make the crops grow strong and tall. be just as level and very few clumps. Any clumps that are left in it are small clumps. It won't make any difference when you're planting your crops. Okay, the harrow's connected to the tractor. It's ready to go. Whoa, the tractors are pulling our arrows right across those furrows. Watch them break up those plowed lumps. See how they hit the dirt? The harrow breaks up all those lumps and smooths out the soil. <laughs> Look at them go. The tractors are working real hard pulling those harrows. You see how they pull across our field at different angles? Farmer McDonald and his men have to use the harrow at least three or four times to get the soil right for planting. Does the tractor play the seeds now, Farmer John? No, the tractor helps again, but now it pulls a machine called a planter. Now, sometimes they're called seed drills or seed hoppers. Planting is also called sowing, and planters sow or put seeds into the soil. Did you know there are different types of planters for corn, potatoes, and other kinds of crops? But they all work the same way. The seed hopper opens up the soil, then it drills in seeds and closes up the hole. It's one smooth motion. Watch this planter make nice, neat rows for all the seeds to grow. 
This huge seed hopper is also putting insecticide into the soil. See those yellow baskets sitting on the back? Insecticides are chemicals that help keep bugs and bad insects away, so they don't come around to hurt the crop. You know, I think they're planting corn in that field. <laughs> Did you know that corn seeds are planted about three feet apart to get the best results? many weeks for crops to grow tall, but I've got a surprise. <laughs> Look, a full field of corn. It's now fall on old McDonald's farm and the corn's ready for harvest. Now watch how the corn gets picked. This plant munching machine is called a combine. It has a special attachment at the front called a corn head. The corn head pulls the ears of corn right into the machine through feed rollers. Inside the combine, the corn cob's taken off the stalk and all the kernels are separated. The kernels are the part we eat at home that taste so sweet. But when the kernels are pulled off, they're blown out through that spout on top and right into a grain bin. The farmers use all the loose kernels to help feed some of their animals, like pigs. See how the stalks come out from the back of the combine? Farmers can't use the corn stalks or the rest of the plant, but they leave it on the field to help with fertilizing. Stalks go right back into the soil and help prevent it from blowing away. Wow! Look at that combine harvest our corn. See those metal rods at the side? They're called snouts, and they help keep the machine going straight in line during the harvest. The corn harvester is one of the most important time-saving devices for farmers around the world. Without it, it would take an experienced worker over eight hours to pick just one acre of planted corn. The corn picker can do the job in only two hours. Great! Look at this beautiful field of wheat. Farmer McDonald planted it weeks ago, and now it's also ready for harvest. Robbie, for hundreds of years, farmers used to harvest wheat entirely by hand. They had to bind it, shock, thresh, winnow, and then get it ground up in a mill. And here comes our automatic combine again to save time. Now, it has another machine at the front called a header. Those quick-turning wheels help pull down the wheat plant. Then inside, the combine separates all the grain from the wheat shaft. All the kernels are pulled off, just like the corn. Now, sometimes a wheat combine has its own cart to carry grain back to the farm. Sometimes there's a separate truck that follows alongside. When the load is full, one truck can go off to the storage bin, another can keep working with the combine. That helps save more time. Now, Robbie, just like our corn harvester, the waste part of the plant is spit out the back and left in the fields as fertilizer. Look at those big wheels turning. Well, this combine can harvest every stalk of wheat out in this field all by itself. The combine can also harvest other small grain crops like alfalfa and clover. This plant chopping monster can handle hundreds of pounds of grain every second, and it weighs over two tons. Robbie, corn and wheat and other small grain crops are grown both for people and for the farm animals, and then they have to be stored away in the cold winter months so the animals will have enough food to eat. Sometimes our grains even shipped overseas to other countries, countries that don't have as many farms as we do. Take a look at these storage facilities. They're huge. They can hold thousands of pounds of grain before being shipped or sold. The farmers use these fast-moving conveyors to help move their grains quickly into storage. This grain's going right into a big holding tank called a silo. Look, it's also time to cut dry and bale the hay out here on Old McDonald's farm. The hay is used to help feed almost all the animals here. We'll go and visit some of the farm animals in just a few minutes and watch them eat. But here's another new machine. It's called a baler, and it does more jobs than farmers used to do by hand. The baler mows over a tall field of grass and cuts it right down. The cut grass goes right up into this machine where huge belts help rotate it into a big round ball. When the baler has enough grass, it stops and just drops the bales of hay right out in the field. Then it keeps working. Look at that grass cutter go. That's great. And now some farmers leave the bales right out in the fields and cover them up. Others put them up into a hayloft in a barn like this for winter storage. Robbie? Robbie, where are you? Let's go inside the barn. Well, Farmer Joe, why don't you tell Robbie how cows get milked? 
So this cow here is a seven-year-old Ashier cow. She's been milking about eight months now. She's given very little milk. She's almost at the end of her cycle of milking. For a cow to stop milking, they have to have a calf. In about two months, she's going to dry off, which means she's not going to be given any milk. She will be given all the food she needs to her calf. And if you look right in this area here, at certain times, you can see the calf kick. I've got my shoulder against her and I'm milking her, I can feel it kicking me a little bit. When they get to be about five months long in their pregnancy, you can start feeling the calf moving and kicking. This cow will probably have about a hundred pound calf when it's born. She'll have no problem, she'll be able to have it by herself. Down here, the cow, easy girl, here is her udder. This is where the milk is. It's a big udder. Here's one tent. Two others on the other back side here. Here's the fourth one. This bag is actually divided into quarters. This cow is being milked by hand when I milk her like this. Uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to milk her twice a day to get the milk out and get her milk right. You've got to get all the milk out when you milk her. You can't just partially milk her. You've got to completely milk her. And that's twice a day you have to milk her. Approximately 12 hours a pot. Uh, if I had a machine, I was milking her with a machine, it'd take me about four or five minutes to completely milk her out, and that's twice a day. And actually, machine milking her is better, because it does a more complete job. Great, Farmer Joe. Our farm only has a few cows, so we can do everything by hand. But look at this. Our neighbor's farm has so many cows, they need to use machines to milk them. There are just too many to do by hand. See how the cow's udders are clean before milking? That's to prevent any disease. These section tips fit around the cow's four teeth. Then they're hooked up to big milking machines that pump out the milk. When the milk's collected, it gets cleaned and processed to make sure it's nice and fresh before we buy it in the store. Don't worry. The cows like to be milked by the machine. They want to give us their milk. Well, look where we are now. Outside the chicken coop. Chicken coop? No, a chicken coop. That's a place where the chickens come in at night to stay safe and warm in the winter. And next to the chicken coop, there's a pen where some of the chickens can run free during the day. You know, they need exercise and sunshine just like us. Hey, let's go inside and have Farmer Joe tell you about our chickens here at Old McDonald's Farm. This is the chicken roost, and this is where the chickens spend their nights. They climb, jump up here, fly up, whatever. They'll perch on this, and this is enough room for them in the summer when it's hot. They'll spread out all over each pole. In the winter, most of them will sit on just one pole and push each other together so that they stay warm for the nights. The chickens mainly will get up into these nest boxes and lay their eggs. Right now, if you look, you got a whole ton of eggs in here. You got three, four, four, ten, twelve, about eighteen eggs laying in here. You look under this chicken right here, this chicken's laying on eggs, sitting on eggs, I mean. She's probably laying one of them. There's three eggs. There's another one, another one. There's five eggs right there. So they've laid about close to their full 100%. There's 25 chickens in here. It's close to 25 eggs in here today. There's not a thing wrong with these eggs, except they're loose right now. You pick them up, put them in a holds a dozen eggs, put them in the store, and buy a dozen like that. And these are nice and fresh eggs. And it's nothing like a fresh eggs, because eggs you buy in the store are typically three weeks old. That's great. Tell us more, Farmer Joe. These chickens here are called bantams. They're half the size of a full-grown chicken. These three right here are her chicks. And they were hatched out about the 1st of November. This is the mother. And the unique thing about these chickens is we call them the snowshoe chickens. They have feathers all the way down their legs and covering their toes. Robbie, the single most important thing in caring for chickens is cleanliness. The cleaner the chicken coop, the more eggs we get because the chickens stay healthier. If the coop isn't clean, the chickens can get very sick and die. So we have to clean the coop every day. In fact, cleanliness around the farm is something we take very seriously here. Robbie, let's go over there now and find out about all the chores they do here at Old McDonald's Farm. On this
this farm, the workers have chores every morning. We start our chores at 8 a.m. First, we have to clean the stalls and barns for all the animals. We also have to feed and water them. You see those small wood chips being scattered around on the floor? The wood chips are little pieces of trees that have been cut up. We buy a lot of them. The chips help keep the ground warm for all our animals when they stay inside the barns. The wood chips also catch the manure that the goats and the other animals have left around. This mixture of manure and wood chips is very important to our farm. That's another reason why we spend so much time clearing up the manure. Why is it important? Why is it going away? Well, I showed you before how we use manure to fertilize the land. This is how we collect it. Our workers pick up this combination of wood chips and manure from all around the farm, and then they shovel it up into wheelbarrows. They carry it right out to our manure platform. Take a look at this manure loader. See how our workers can come right up to the top of the platform? They position the wheelbarrow right over the manure spreader and let the wood chips and manure drop inside. It's tough work to clean the stalls. It can take a long time. Most days the workers just pick up chips which have manure, but once a week they have to clean out the entire barn and sweep it clean. Feeding all the animals is the other big chore we have to do every day on Old McDonald's farm. While some stalls are being cleaned, other animals are being fed. Sometimes our workers feed the animals right in the barns. Then they let them out to get exercise and play. Sometimes the animals are fed outside. Then we start cleaning up. It depends on the weather that day. Oh, look, it's Farmer McDonald up in the hayloft. He's cut off some hay from the bales, and now he's preparing it to feed his animals. Here come the donkeys. They're going to eat their hay. Almost all the animals eat hay on our farm. Hay is very important to the farm. That's why we cut it down every spring and put it into those big bales. The goats and the sheep are also very hungry today. They eat hay from a big wooden box called a feeder. And just like people, all animals need to drink fresh water. It's our workers' job to inspect and make sure that there's fresh water every day. Otherwise, the animals might get sick. Look who's also here today. It's Dana, the farrier. Let's talk to her about what the farrier does around the farm. The farrier takes care of the horse's feet. They trim them and shoe them. Um, they can do corrective work if the horse has a problem. Today, I have some ponies and horses to trim, and I also have a horse to shoe in the front and also put snow pads on. First, I start out with my hammer and my clinch cutter, and I unbend the nail that I bend it over the first time so I can take the shoe off easier with my shoe pullers. Then I use my hook knife to clean the foot and also to pare out the dead sole. Then I use my nippers to nip any hoof that has grown since I was last year, which is six to eight weeks. I use my rasp to rasp off the excess foot and level it. And then once I have the shoe on, I use my rasp and my clinchers, which are these, to bend over the nails and finish off the foot. I enjoy most being around the horses and uh, helping them and their feet need work and just working around them. Where are the pigs from, John? Where are they? Well, pigs are some of the nicest and friendliest animals we have on the farm, but everyone makes fun of them because they think they're ugly. They squeal and roll around in the mud. They like to eat up garbage. They can eat leftovers from people, food, grass cuttings, all the leftover crops and stalks like corn. Well, they can even eat the entire ear of corn. Old McDonald's farm has a good home for the pigs. There's a nice big area for them to play in and a pig pen where they can go in at night to keep warm during the winter. Pigs are hardy animals and they like to stay outside a lot. Our friendly pigs are sure having fun today.
talk with you about something that's excited me ever since I was a little boy growing up way back in Kansas. When I was very young, much younger than you, I used to spend hours thinking about where things came from, what makes everything work. For instance, where did my mother get that milk that she made me drink every day? <laughs> yes, I know, from a store. But then where'd the store get it? And what about all those cereals and the bread that tasted so good every morning? The corn and the wheat, where'd the store get that? Well, I got a little bit older, maybe about your age, and I found out that all these things come from a farm. Well, sometimes all different kinds of farms. I learned that a farm is a place where animals and planted things grow up and get picked. Where you can pick fruit right off a tree. And where people work hard at all kinds of jobs. Jobs that help put the very food you eat right on your dinner table. Now, not every farm is used to make food. Some farms are used to keep animals that people need. There are farms for horses, for instance, or for sheep. People like to ride horses. And we use the wool from sheep to help us keep warm in the winter. We make clothing out of that wool. But no matter what kind of work goes on in a farm, every farm is a very exciting place. So let's spend a little while together here today on Old McDonald's Farm. I'll show you all the different things that go on here and how everything works. And believe me, by the time we're finished, you'll not only know a lot about farming, you'll be amazed at what you've seen. Wow, if it isn't my good friend, Robbie. Hi there, Robbie. You want to walk around with me on the farm today? You bet. I want to see everything on the farm. <laughs> good. Well, first of all, now every farm has someone who's in charge. Someone who tells all the workers what to do and make sure the work's done right. This person has to decide what's going to happen that day on the farm. It's a hard job with a lot of responsibilities. This man or woman's called a farmer. And this particular farm here is run by old farmer McDonald. Well, here he is now. Hi there, Farmer McDonald. Hello, Farmer John. Hi. And you must be Robbie. I'm delighted to have both of you here today. Today's a special day here at Old McDonald's Farm because we've got a lot of extra work to do. We're starting to prepare the fields today, and we've got a lot of different animals to take care of. And not only that, we're going to use some of the biggest and noisiest machines we've got. Some of them are very dangerous. Too dangerous for children to get close to, I'm afraid. We'll have to stay at a safe distance, Robbie. Come on, Farmer McDonald. Let's get started. Look, here comes our tractor. And there's Farmer Joe, our head man here. Well, let's have Farmer Joe tell Robbie how the tractor works as we start to get ready. This tractor is probably the most important piece of equipment on the farm. For number one reason, it can do about anything. It can push, it can pull, uh, it can push and pull any type of weather, mainly because it's got four-wheel drive, which means all four wheels can turn at the same time. You can really dig in. The back wheels, these, weigh close to 1,000 to 1,500 pounds each because they are loaded with soft water and very little air. The front tires are loaded with strictly air. Why they have soft water is for balance so the tractor does not tip over. Inside the cab where I'm sitting is a steering wheel. And believe it or not, a lot of this stuff is the same as you have in your car. This has a tilt steering wheel. Right here is a hand throttle, a hand gas pedal. Over here is a shifting lever that makes the equipment that we tow behind it work. These two handles right here make the bucket go up and down and turn. Now if I push this handle, the bucket turns down. If you push this handle, everything goes down. These are the brakes. And right now, the emergency brake is on. This, to release the emergency brake, I press down, let the handle down, and my brake is on. What does the tractor do? Here on the farm, this tractor cuts hay, bales hay, rakes hay, uh, plows soil, harrows soil, plants the seed, fertilizes, spread manure, just about anything. Farmer McDonald uses his tractors to attach different machines. Each machine helps him with a different job around the farm. First, the farmer prepares the land for planting. Then he plants the seeds that grow into crops. He can plant many different kinds of seeds, corn, wheat, or vegetables. After the seeds grow, he picks or harvests his crop. Farmer McDonald uses his tractor to pull almost every machine on the farm to help with these jobs. 
Ark's first job is to prepare or what's called till the land. It wants to create the best possible soil conditions before planting a crop. First, the soil needs some fertilizer. Fertilizer? Fertile means to grow, and farmers put fertilizer into the soil to help their crops grow better. Well, look at Farmer McDonald, and he's with the tractor again. He and Farmer Joe are putting on a big machine called a spreader. Well, some farmers use their spreader to spread chemical fertilizers. Others use old hay and leaves that have dried out. That's called composting, and it helps the soil hold in water. All fertilizers are good for the soil. They feed it, just like we need food. And it helps make the crops grow strong and tall.